Mathilde was one of the pretty and charming women who's been born into a family of unfavorable economic status. She has no dowry, no fancy jewels or clothing, yet these are the only things she lives for. She was married off to a lowly clerk in the Ministry of Education, Mr. Loisel, who can afford to provide her only with a modest, though not uncomfortable lifestyle. She is a simple person without money to dress herself at its best, and she was unhappy as if she got to bankruptcy. Beauty is the only power that Matilde possesses because for her, it's the only one that she'll have for a lifetime. For Matilde, being wealthy amounts to living a fairy tale. Having the rich life is attractive because it's glamorous, beautiful, exciting, fine, and unlike the clothes she wears, the amount of money she has and the dingy apartment in which she lives. Honey, I'm back. Pay something for you. What do you expect me to do with this? Honey, this would be a great chance for us to go to the ball. Everybody will come. And then, we, it's a great chance for us to spend our time together. Look, I don't have any dresses to wear. For sure they have beautiful ones. I don't want to embarrass myself with this kind of clothes. Honey, I already have my appointment to the tailor and she made a dress just for you. What about jewelry? I don't have any jewelry. Honey, I already asked Miss Forrester, so... So you can borrow some jewelry if jewelry is for her and she's rich. She's very very rich. Yes, that's great. When I think about that, I'll go to her and ask her if I can borrow her jewelry. The next day, she went to her friend's house, Madame Forrester, and asked if she can lend her some jewelry that she may wear for the ball. Jewelry? Sure, my dear. Here, in this box. I got I have jewelry that you can buy. Whoa. These are so beautiful. Do you have anything else? Why? Isn't there anything you like? There's something else I want, but I still can't find it. Can I borrow that? This? No, the one that you're wearing. Oh, this. Of course, of course I can. Really? Yes. This is so beautiful. I promised to return it back after the ball. Thank you so much. But I have to go now. Bye for now. The day of the party came. Mathilde is the most beautiful woman in attendance and everyone notices her. Matilde was the prettiest among the other girls who was stylish, elegant, smiling, and wide with joy. When Matilde arrived with his husband, everyone was in awe when they saw Matilde in her beautiful dress. Only you can do make all this world seem right. Matilde continued talking to everybody and met new people. That day, she felt that she was the richest girl in town. When they finally return home, Mathilde is saddened that the night has ended. As she looks herself in the mirror, day. she discovers yeah, that her necklace fun. is no longer around her neck. And I feel like I'm much prettier now. Wait. What happened? Is there something wrong? What if we tell Mrs. Foster that it was broken and we'll fix it so we can have more time to find an alternate solution? I'm scared. No, it's okay, honey. We should tell that it's broken so we can have more time. Okay. After a week, Monjulo Wiesel says they have to see about replacing it. They visit many jewelers, search for a similar necklace, and finally find one. It costs 40,000 francs, although the jeweler says he will give it to them for 36,000. Mathilde then returned to Forrester's house and took back the similar necklace that they bought. We should have returned it sooner. I 
I messed up, didn't I? Uh, yeah. I'm sorry. Next time, I'll return it soon. That's alright. I understand. Bye! The Louisels began to live a life of crippling poverty. They dismissed their servant and moved into an even smaller apartment. Munju Louisel works three jobs and Matilda spends all her time doing the heavy housework. This misery lasts 10 years, but at the end, they have repaid their financial debts. Matilda's extraordinary beauty is now gone. She looks just like the other women of pure households. They are both tired and irrevocably damaged from these years of hardship. One Sunday, while she is out for a walk, oh, Matilda hello, spots Madam, Madame Forrester. Feeling emotional, she approaches her and offers greetings. Uh, no, it's me, Matilde. Oh, my poor Matilde, you've changed so much. Well, yes, it's all because of you. Me? I didn't do anything to you. I lost something that you own. Something that I own? Yes. Your necklace. My necklace? But you returned it back to me. I bought exactly a necklace like that. So you bought a necklace to replace mine? Yes. Oh, that poor Matilde. It is my fault. Haven't I told you? That jewelry is only for costume. It doesn't cost anything. The necklace taught us to be happy and to be contented to what we have. In this story, Matilde was in medium class, but she was unhappy and not satisfied to what we had. She tried to have a things that it's hard to get. At the end, she doesn't only stay bitter in that state of life, but she continued living the life of poverty and spent all of her life suffering for her dream.